Okay, guys, time to take a look at some 4.8 liter modifications. What happens if we install shorty headers? What about long tube headers? How about a camshaft? What happens if we change the intake manifold? Hey, what happens if we do it all? Heads, cam, intake, and headers. Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to take a look at one of my favorite motors, the 4.8 liter, but before we do, please make sure, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff so you get notified when I do all of this cool testing. We're going to take a look at modifications here in part one to naturally aspirated 4.8 liters. I'm going to show you what the modifications do and how much power they make. We're going to take a look at some shorty headers, some long tube headers, an intake manifold swap. We're going to take a look at naturally camshafts and then finish it all up and throw the kitchen sink at it with heads, cam, and intake manifold on our NA combinations. Let's check it out. Okay, let's jump in on our first minor modifications to a 4.8 liter. A lot of times guys are thinking about, hey, what if I did exhaust mods? What if I changed from the stock exhaust manifolds to either shorty headers, which are very common, or even long tube headers? What happens when I do that? So I ran a couple of tests. We have a 4.8 liter stock block crank rods, uh, had, had small dome pistons in it. It's a 4.8 that I use for a lot of stuff. Had stock 706 heads, uh, the stock truck intake manifold, the throttle body, the way that we run it on the engine dyno. We ran it with stock exhaust manifolds with length of tubing, had some extensions on it, optimized the tune with our Holly HP management system, and here's what we got. First running it with stock exhaust manifolds. We produced 329 horsepower, let's see, uh, 329.5, so 330 horsepower, 333 foot-pounds of torque with the stock exhaust manifolds. And here's what happened when we put shorty headers on it. These are JBA headers. We didn't really gain much power uh, going from the stock exhaust manifolds to the shorty headers, and this is typically what happens. We were, we were talking about two or three horsepower here. But let me show you what happened when we added long tube headers. So we'll get rid of our shorty headers here. And this is what happened when we added long tube headers. So long tube headers added power everywhere, which is pretty typical. In this case, they, the gains were 9 to 10 horsepower. But what I also want to show you is that the gains that you get from these things, whether they're shorty headers or long tube headers, are very dependent on the motor that you're testing it on. So this was on basically a bone stock motor, and you can saw you saw the kind of gains that we would get. But here's what happened when we did the same test on another 4.8 liter actually the same 4.8 liter, but here's what happened when we did it on a modified version. So it's our stock exhaust manifolds, and here are our shorty headers. So on our modified motor, we had a, a much, much larger camshaft in it. We had a Crane 224 cam. We had the same short block, but the Crane 224, 232 cam, 590 lift. And we also had Trick Flow heads on it, Trick Flow 205 head. So this thing was making more power and wanted and you know required more exhaust flow. So here are the specs on the cam, 115 degree LSA. But when we ran shorty headers versus stock exhaust manifolds, we gained uh, looks like about six horsepower. So a little bit more of a gain on the shorty headers on the modified version than on the stock version, which is we've come to which now you guys should come to expect. So here's what happened when we put headers on there, long tube headers on the modified version, picked up even more power. Uh, peak power went from 427 to 442 horsepower. So we're talking about 16, 17 horsepower in, in that range from the headers. And they picked up a bunch of power down low too, as you can see down here at uh, 33 or 30 or 36 or 3700 RPM. So long tube headers were worth uh, good power gains down low and up top. Common misconception, shorty headers or stock exhaust manifolds do not make more power down low. Long tube headers make more power down low. So let's check out our next modification. Okay, now let's take a look at one of the more popular mods and probably should be maybe the most popular mod short of, I guess, putting boost in. But I'm sure more guys put camshafts in and that's what I'm talking about on this 4.8 liter and for any LS. A camshaft is kind of the go-to thing for the LS platform because it already has really good cylinder heads and it has a good intake manifold. Really the only thing it's missing to make good power and big power gains is the camshaft. This is a 4.8 liter. This was a very, very tired 4.8 liter that we had to do a bunch of work to. I had to put a new cam in it. We had to put new 
a couple of new lifters in it because it had torn the cam up and the lifters allowed them to rotate. The lifter trays we had to replace, we had to take the head, we took the heads off and had to clean out a bunch of carbon because the guy had let it run with <laughs> with a couple cylinders not firing. So it was a fair bit of work, but in the end it, it turned out okay. The, this motor ran good. It was a 4.8 liter all stock LR4. We put another factory camshaft in it. And we ran it, in this case, we ran it with the factory springs because the camshaft that we were testing was a Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris NSR cam. And the NSR stands for no springs required. That means you can put this camshaft in with the stock springs. You don't also have to do a spring upgrade, saving you some money. This NSR cam obviously worked very well. The rest of the motor was set up with the uh, stock throttle body, stock truck intake manifold, stock uh, 706 or 862 heads, stock springs, as I said, stock push rods, rockers, stock short block. We did run inch and three quarter long tube headers on it. We had 80 pound injectors in it because later on we would be running uh, some boost on this thing and tuned with the HP management system and run in this manner with our Mazir electric water pump the way that we run it on the engine dyno. Our stock 4.8 liter produced 326 horsepower. Peak torque checked in at 337 foot-pounds of torque. After we put in the Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris NSR cam, the no springs required cam, peak power jumped up to 375 horsepower and peak torque was 353 foot-pounds of torque. You can see from the curve, the truck Norris cam basically gained power everywhere, or at least from 3,000 on out, all the way out to 6,500. We got, as I said, almost 50 horsepower gain peak to peak. Out here, it's you know 6,400 RPM. The gain was more like 70 horsepower. So it's not unusual to get very, very big gains from camshafts. Don't expect huge gains down low, but you can get big gains up at the top. And there are even bigger cams that you could put in here. Obviously, those are going to require a spring upgrade, but you can make even more power with bigger cams. The problem is you're going to trade low speed response, but... <laughs> the nice thing about that is you could put a big camshaft in it and then stick a converter in it and then it works well, but you guys get to decide that. So let's take a look at our next set of mods. Okay, next up on the list of our 4.8 liter modifications is an intake manifold swap. And this intake manifold swap happened when we already had a number of modifications done to the motor. So bear in mind, just like when we talked about the changes made with headers, they change when you modify the combination. Obviously on a stock motor, the gains aren't as big and on a modified motor, the gains are more. And so we're only taking a look on a modified motor. I can tell you now that going from the stock truck intake manifold to the fast manifold, which is what this test is about, is not worth the same amount of power on a stock motor. In fact, it's something I probably wouldn't recommend doing on a stock 4.8 liter. But on this combination, it made some pretty good power gains. So we'll take a look. This was a modified 4.8 liter. Let's go ahead and take a look at our specs here. We, it was a 4.8 liter LR4. It had total engine airflow back with the guys from when Brian Tooley owned this uh, this stuff, um, when he owned total engine airflow. They did a CNC set of, and they still do these, but they did a CNC set of ported 706 heads. They This had had the Crane 224 cam, which is a 590 lift, 224, 232 duration at 50 and 114 degree load separation angle. We had inch and three quarter headers on it with mufflers. We had a Holly HP management system on it and dialed in all of the tuning. This thing had 46 pound injectors in it at the time when we were running the NA modifications. That doesn't really make a, make a difference. You just need to make sure that you have enough injector and fuel flow to support your intended power level. And we certainly had more than enough for that. So run in this manner our, with the truck intake manifold and truck throttle body. Our combination, our modified combination produced 452 horsepower and 388 foot-pounds. And here's what happened when we put a fast LSXRT, the truck version, if you will, although it's it's the only thing that makes it a truck version is that it fits with the FIAD system on the truck. It makes the same power as the LSXR manifold. But here's what happened when we put the LSXRT manifold on it. The power output jumped up to 476 horsepower from 452, so 24 horsepower from the intake swap. So it's worth a pretty good uh, jump in power. And most of the gains came above 5,500 RPM. In fact, there was a slight dip 
from 5,000 to 55, but then it was better, <laughs> and then it was a little worse. So you can see there, there are trade-offs associated, associated with a different intake manifold, but if you take a look at this combination, this thing was revving all the way out to 7,000 RPM. But on this combination, 24, 25 horsepower, uh, easy to gain that with a good fast manifold when you have the other things that you need, like heads cam and intake. So speaking of heads cam and intake, let's take a look and see what happens when we just throw the whole kitchen sink at it with heads cam and intake compared to a stock 4.8. Okay, our final look at the NA modifications for the 4.8 liter. We're going to start with a stock one and we're going to jump up and just throw everything at it. Basically heads, cam, intake, and headers and all that. So what we did was run a stock LR4 from the wrecking yard. We had freshened it up, uh, we, but we reused all the rings and all that stuff. All we did was do a deck surface on it and clean the deck surface of the head. Uh, I think they did a valve job on the on the heads and stuff too, just to make sure that the thing was working the way that it should have. I think they even did a ball hone on the, on the motor. And so we ran this thing in stock trim from the wrecking yard the way that we do Mazir electric water pump. We had inch and three quarter headers with mufflers and, and collector extensions. We ran it with a Holly HP management system. We had bigger injectors in it. And we ran this thing in stock trim and it produced 333 horsepower and 343 foot-pounds of torque. You see we ran this thing from 2,000 RPM, so all, all the 2,000 RPM guys will be happy, all the way out to 6,500, and it made peak power at a whopping 5,400 RPM, made peak torque at 4,700 RPM. Here's what happened when we put heads, cam, and intake manifold on this thing, and we put our combination, our heads cam and intake consisted of the our Crane 224 cam, so 590 lift, 224, 232 at 50, and 114 degree lobe separation angle. We had the total engine airflow CNC ported 706 heads, and then we had our fast LSXRT and 102 millimeter throttle body. So we changed everything, basically the whole top end essentially, and uh, along with the camshaft. And when we did that, we picked push power up to 476 horsepower. Peak torque jumped up to 392 foot pounds of torque. And as you can see from the change in power here, it's making power all the way out at 7,000 RPM, which is obviously we've extended that quite a bit past where it was when it was stock. But it also made basically the same power below 4,400 RPM as the stock motor. So it didn't really lose out. I think had we run the thing down at 2,000 RPM, we probably would have lost a little bit of power down low. But the combination of the you know, the wilder cam timing usually means we trade power down low, almost always with the stock camshaft, but the added airflow from the cylinder heads and the intake manifold all allowed us to make essentially the similar power in that RPM range, but just make a lot more up top. But again, as we said, when you're going and thinking about cam changes on a 4.8 liter, you're going to push power out a at a lot higher RPM. So if you just step on the gas anywhere from 2000 to 4400 RPM, it's going to make the same power as stock. It's not until we get in the high RPM stuff where all these NA mods are really paid off. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. Coming up in part two, we're going to take a look at 4.8 liters with power adders. We're talking nitrous and centrifugal blowers and roots blowers and twin screw blowers and, of course, turbos.